Oshio, please excuse me if the camera shakes around a little bit. I was being lazy today. I didn't bother to get my uh, camera stand tripod, you know, and set it up. But and also got flies around out here to nutso. But uh, I want to share uh, some thoughts with you. You know about how that it sounds good. And what are you thinking? I guess the two thoughts are really one thought when it comes down to it. But uh, anyway, you know, you sit there and you see a lot of things in this this life. I mean, you, you see how things has changed throughout the years. Uh, you know, ever since, I mean, you know, fads come and they go, uh, lifestyles, and, and let's face it, it seems like wickedness gets worse and worse. I mean, it's like depravity, there is no bounds, it seems like, you know, and if you're against those things, all right, for instance, uh, something that's good for a woman or a young man to be a virgin. Well, if, you, if the, the general majority of today's society, and it has this been, way, been this way for some years, is that if you're a virgin, you're not cool. You're, you're out of it, and they make fun. But that is something to be more... Uh, for a better or lack of words, something to be proud of. It's something that one has no shame. The shame is, is those who go out and, uh, you know, they all they can think about is running from bed to bed to bed to different ones, and all they think about is sexy, sex. And that's a key word. Even Christians, those who are claiming to be Christians, it likes to look sexy. And they keep talking about what looks sexy. That shouldn't even be in your vocabulary. Understand? Because you're sounding like everyone else. And if you're like everyone else, like everything else, the philosophies and the main thinking, the general frame uh, of what everyone else in the world, the whole inhabited world is thinking and going along with it, and you become just like they do, or you become an enemy of God. But one can also become a friend of God. See, a friend tells you the things that you need to hear and should hear. That's a friend. A so-called friend who's really not your friend, they tell you what you want to hear. Okay? All right, now... Let's take a look at like this, uh, for instance, on the news uh, about this, uh, there I think it was in Canada, this couple who didn't want to uh, raise their child up uh, to, uh, you know, didn't want the, anyone knowing or didn't even want the child to know it's sex. To let the child decide uh, his or her uh, sex. My point through all this is, you know, everything that's decent and good and pure has become black, dark. You know, there is no white. There is no purity. You know, see the thing is, a friend tells you and warns you of things to come. Things ahead or, or the about warning you about the route that you're taking in life uh, if you're heading in the wrong direction they will warn you about it if you're doing something wrong they tell you what they think what they know and and on your part if you're a real friend to them and if they're your real friend you will listen and consider what they say see we're not to be a part of them that would be a good one for this video is them all right and that's the world 
everything in this world you know uh, you know people uh, you know they just don't understand that you know they tend to make mockery of God and judgment and everything uh, now it was a sad thing that uh, what uh, Harold Camping did but he's not the only one there's others out there there's some we never even know of that tell their congregations or their little group of followers the same things and they, it's like they love control and, and whatever hidden agendas they have but uh, but the thing is, they cause others out there to make fun of judgment. And, and you got those who don't like anyone telling them that they're doing wrong. They like doing these things that are evil. But for everyone else in this world calls good when someone who's living for what is right and pure tells them it's wrong, well then they get all upset and been out of shape. So, the thing is, what we got to stop and consider is, first of all, what did God, what did Jesus say about hell? And a lot of them think, make jokes, that hell is a, oh, that's a place to be. If all my friends are going there, it's going to be, no, hell is not a place for, for partying. It's not a place where, oh, you won't be alone. But it ain't going to be any place of great comfort and partying. The only thing that, that's going to be going through your mind is nothing but torment. But here, let me give you a reality check here. What God and what Jesus even spoke of it. He did not speak of it in light of uh, something good. He, he spoke of it as a bad place. The Bible speaks of it as a place of shame and contempt. Read Daniel. Jesus talks about it as a place being of weeping. That doesn't sound joyful to me. And gnashing of teeth. Pain. Alright. Uh, also it speaks of a place of punishment. A place until judgment. Oh yeah. So here's the thing. That a lot of you out there uh, who don't know the Lord. Or those of you who are claiming to be Christians by name and word only. But in actuality you're not because of the way you live your life because your fruits tell alright check this out hell is not the lake of fire and the lake of fire is not hell alright that's a little you you read the bible and see there's you know uh uh it's not the same hell is a place like well to, to give you an idea it's like well when you do something wrong and you get arrested, you get thrown in the pokey. So you're there until what? Until your trial. Now, eh, that's the way hell is, except hell is not quite like it. Actually, it's worse. It is a place that you sit until your trial, judgment, for the great white throne judgment. You're there and you're in torment. And this is something that you need to think about. The Lord, the reason why it's brought in there is because God, even in, um, when you read Ezekiel, you'll see that God does not desire for anybody, even a wicked person, He does not desire for them to die, and He does not desire for them to you know, you know, when I say die, we're talking not just a physical death. I mean, we're all going to die, but it has to do with judgment. And not in light of, you know, as in, in favor uh, for you in a good way. No. If you're living your life, everything against what God says. You can say, I'm a good person, and God's not like it. I, I, you know, if he did, I wouldn't worship him. No, who are you to speak back or even complain to who, him who created you? Who created everything? You, he, it's not for you to question him on that, nor me. But the thing is, what you ought to be thankful is that he's been merciful to you. I mean, he's been good to you. And 
and you ought to be glad that he, he, he loved you enough to not only give you warning and, and give you a choice of life and death, he gave you a choice. But he also will give you a warning what happens if you make the wrong choice. Like any loving parent or friend would do for their child. So you can sit there and uh, go through all this, uh, you know, I'm a good person, you know, and every, you know, there's some guy, I don't remember his name, supposed to be calls himself a pastor, he wrote a book and stuff, and even been on TV a couple of times and stuff, and people just swallowing up everything he's saying, saying that, you know, you know, there's really no one's going to hell. That man is in judgment already. He, and the thing is, what has judged him? The Lord's words. Even Jesus himself said that. It's his words that will judge that man. And also the man's own mouth, because, you know, it said, uh, that each one of us would give account for every idle word that is careless word we speak. We will even be judged. And by that, not only that, but by our deeds, we will be judged. Now, you know, and it doesn't say that, you know, if you're just a good person, you know, hey, check mark, good, you know, good. oh, look at all these marks, you're going to heaven. Open the pearly gates. See, Hollywood has given bad impressions throughout the years, especially bad was bad during the 50s. Hmm, even further back, I guess. But the thing is, people swallow everything, the philosophies and the general thinking of everyone else. Hollywood is uh, the evangelist, should we say, for everything that is not pure, not good. Everything that is unholy. Uh, you know, you hear the expressions, oh, you're so bad, uh, oh, that's wicked. These are not good words. In fact, you should refrain from that kind of speech from your mouth. You know, uh, in light of everything, of what is said about God's love for us, the choices He gives us, life or death, and how he even uh, describes what judgment will be like. I mean, shouldn't you stop and consider that maybe you ain't so good after all? Because it said our own righteousness, our own so-called goodness, is like filthy rags. When it talks in the Bible about filthy rags, they're talking about minstrel rags. Hello? That's not good. Alright? So... If you don't know the Lord, or you claim that you do, you need to, you know, like, especially if you claim to, 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 to know Him, they claim that you're a Christian, but yet you're ashamed of His words, and you, you know, and you're living your life like everyone else in the world, and no one can tell the difference from you, from, from Jack Adam. There's something wrong. You need to test yourself to see if his spirit is in you. This is if his spirit is in you. It, it talks about if we have his spirit, then you know that we have uh, life, uh, that we are his. But see, the thing is, salvation comes only one way through Jesus, not through Buddha, Allah, uh, Shiva, Ali Kazam, and Huji Buji, and Oprah Winfrey. No. It comes only through the one. Because anyone who says otherwise calls Jesus a liar. You call Jesus a liar, you're calling God a liar. So, let me suggest this. Look at yourself, look at your life, and think about where you're heading. How are you, how are you fitting in according to what everything the Bible says? Look at it and think about it carefully. We all do. We, you know, nobody is uh, perfect as in flawless without failures at something. But when the Bible says to be perfect, you know, and talking about being uh, complete, uh, to be whole, you know, uh, wholesome thinking and, and, and things like this, to, 
to have a, uh, it's like having perfect love, uh, complete whole love to be like the Father. You know, it's, uh, there's a lot of words I can, you know, it just, uh, the thing that you can say about this, but, but the thing is, it's not about, you know, like a piece of work that you work on. And, you know, you're like a, what we would call today a perfectionist, you know, and everything's got to be so-so. The thing is, you, you have to have faith in Him and rely on Him and turn away from that which is not pleasing to God. Do a complete turnaround, a change. Because if you're not changed... If there's no change in you, then you're no different than anyone else in this world. That is, when I'm saying that is, you're no different than any of those that the Bible calls an enemy of God. You can't go around and and uh, think that uh, if you just think, well, I'm just a good person, I'll just do good and I'll be alright, i get to earn some marks. No, it don't work that way. You're calling Bible a liar. You're calling Jesus a liar. You're calling God a liar. He who walks in darkness is in enmity with God. Read, read First John. You know, you're, you know, you're. If you're in darkness and you're claiming to be in light, but you're walking in darkness, you're a liar. You're still in your sins. And you're wallowing in them, and you're enjoying it making excuses. Jesus is the light. And it tells us that we need to repent, turn away from our evil deeds, and turn to Him. And, and to accept by faith what He did for us. That He died to wash us clean. Because a lot of you, you what you're thinking is that Jesus died for nothing. If your goodness can get you there, Jesus didn't have to die, but he did. What do you think about in Egypt when the blood was put on the, the, the posts so that the, the destroyer would not kill the firstborns, huh? Why do you think that was there for? Why do you think that's even mentioned? It was the blood of a lamb. Who is that lamb? Jesus. It's only his blood. It covers you unless you put your faith and trust in Him and do a complete turnaround from your old ways of life and accept Him and live for Him and let Him be your God and guide in life. Unless you confess Him with, without being ashamed, just, you know, to confess Him before all that He is your Master and He is your Lord. And unless you obey Him completely and holy and and subscribe to his word and live that way you know the way he says to live you you know you're lost it's only through Jesus by accepting him turning away repent turn away from your wicked ways I don't know uh, who you are out there but there's a lot of you out there who don't know the Lord and you claim that you do and there's a lot of you just heard the things of the grapevine or some and you've seen things from people who claimed they were Christians and they really were not and you figured that all Christians are that way they're not so you really have no excuse so think about it, all right? There is a way out, and there is someone who cares. God loves you. That's why Jesus came. He, he's the King of all kings and Lord of lords. He is life. He is truth. He is the bread of life. You need to think about it. Are you an enemy of God? Do you want to be an enemy of God? Because if you want to be an enemy of God, that's a fight and a, a thing that you'll never win. And in the end, like in all those way all things, we have to die. Sooner or later, we have to die. And guess where you're going to be?
Huh? Do you know? Think about it. You need to pick up the Bible and take another look. Reevaluate your life. So, until then, my friends, let me say this. God loves you. He's made a way, and He gives you choice of life and death. So, which is it? Huh? So, think about it. Because it's up to you and your decision today, right now, or tomorrow. If you don't wait too long, your decision can makes all the difference between life and death. Because sooner or later, this old body is going to die. But that ain't the end. When I speak of life and death, you need to think about that. We're not talking about when your, your body no longer functions and you're buried in the ground. No, there's more to that. There's a, a life beyond. So it's a matter on where you go from there, huh? So, God bless you. And may you make the right choices. Because it is life or death. Shalom. And I hope.